Lord God gave me a special word today. The revelation of Jesus. I was standing there in worship and I was ready. I said, Lord, you have a prophetic word. He said, for starters, it's going to be in the word. Amen. So he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying today to the church. Amen. There's a prophetic word in this word today. That's what the Lord told me. And it reads in verse 2, For I determined not to know, this is Paul the Apostle saying, For I determined not to know anything among you, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. In fact, let's go to verse 1. Don't no, come back to verse 2. And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Amen. Amen. He didn't come, that word excellency in the Greek it means I didn't come with superiority in my speech. You know, anytime someone comes and they have an aura of superiority about them, right away they stepped off into the wrong spirit. Amen. Amen. Because <laughs> Jesus gave the example. Amen. And, and, and that example stays forever. When he took his robe off, bowed down, and washed his disciples' feet. And he said, the greatest among you, let him be as the servant. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, also, of course, all the apostles are to take after the example of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So he said, I came when I came. I didn't come with excellency of speech or wisdom. All the apostles, one thing that was noted about them when they were taken before the religious leaders, they were wondering, they're like, now these are unlearned men. How are they talking to us about the scripture and about God? Yeah. Amen. And, so, and they took note that they had been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'd rather spend time with Jesus than, than at some university or some. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying Bible college and all seminaries are that bad or anything. Amen. But I'd rather get my information from Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and that's what Paul did. You know, he, he knew the scriptures, but when he met Jesus, and that's what we're going to talk about, he, he, he knew Jesus after he met Jesus. Hey, Dan, like, try it one more time. Unplug it and let it stand for like a minute off. But we're going to keep going. So, <laughs> then he said in verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Say, Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Sometimes in the church, people are trying to get us to know too many other things. Yeah. And not enough of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. 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 Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you yeah. except Jesus Christ. Yeah. And Him crucified. That's right. The church needs to come back in the pattern of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some churches are starting to go astray and they're taking the pattern of other religious um patterns in like religious organizations and they're beginning to look like maybe uh, you know like we're still back in the Old Testament and there's a bunch of Levi priests around and stuff <laughs> right. but the church needs to get back, get their eyes on Jesus, amen? amen. Paul said I, I determined, I don't want to hear what anyone says about no Jewish laws anymore because Paul was fighting about the Jewish Jewish laws and you got to be circumcised and different things. He said, but I've determined to know one thing and that was Jesus Christ <laughs> and Him crucified. Yeah. We don't need to add traditions of men. Be careful of traditions of men. Traditions of men will try to creep in into the church yeah. to, weigh you, to weigh you down yeah. the burdens of men. Where you end up heavy laden with 
things that originated from the mind of man and not from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus came in to bring a new thing. That's right. God said, Behold, I do a new thing. Yeah. So that's why Paul was saying he wanted to only know about Jesus. Some people make their own movement, their own system, and then they pray for Jesus to bless them. Right. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that and we're going to dress this way and dress that way and don't dress that way and we're going to we're going to do different things and uh, we're going to set up different positions and orders yeah. and then, oh, okay, Jesus, please bless us. <laughs> right. No, you got to start with Jesus. Yeah. Let Jesus lead you where he wants you to go, amen? That's right. He's going to lead you by the still waters, glory to God. <laughs> Yeah. He's going to lead you into the green pastures. Yeah. And he's going to restore your very soul. Amen. Yeah. Look at Matthew chapter 11. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent. There's that term what Paul kind of mentioned that I didn't come with excellency of speech or of wisdom no Jesus is saying father I thank you that you hid these things from the wise and uh -huh. the prudent and have revealed them unto babes uh -huh. babes simple humble people the father hides his precious truths the most unveiled truths for the humble for the babies this is what Jesus was thanking the father he said you hid them he was talking about the religious leaders the Pharisees scribes the priests they were after Jesus to get him they wanted to kill him every time Jesus showed up they were the only ones mad amen amen so Jesus was saying I thank you that you hid these things from the wise and the prudent those that think those that thought they knew everything. Uh -huh. They've been to the theological seminary of the Pharisees. Oh, yeah. They've been to the educational places of the priest and they walk around and, and acting all pious and everything. Jesus rebuked him. He said, outwardly you look beautiful. In yeah. fact, he said, you look like a white sepulcher, but inward you're full of dead man's bones, he said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Jesus is saying, I thank you. And the thing that was hidden from them was him. Jesus was hidden from their eyes. Uh -huh. There was the Messiah of Israel. Walking in the streets, going in their synagogues. They were blind because they said, no, this can't be him. He don't look like us. He don't dress like us. Uh -huh. can't be. This can't be the Messiah. They had confusion over the scriptures. And that was the truth that was hidden from the religious people. But Jesus said, I thank you that you revealed these truths or this truth unto babies. Some people knew Jesus. Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, like one of them, told them, said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, Peter, yeah. a fisherman. Yeah. Rough around the edges. Oh yeah. One time he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, Peter, you are a stone. And upon this rock I will build my church. Come on now. The gates of yeah. hell will not I'll prevail yeah. against yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That rock was knowing Jesus. Yeah. Knowing who he was. So he said, For so, Father, for even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. This is how our Father has set it up. So Jesus said, All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. That's right. Neither knoweth any man the Father. Except the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. See? Yeah. Jesus.
Jesus was hidden from them. Because the Father resists the proud. When people start thinking that they know and they start walking in their in the conceits of their own mind and eyes. It says the Father resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. To the humble. Yeah. That's right. He gives grace to the humble. Those that humble themselves under his mighty hand. Amen. Those that say, Lord, I don't know nothing except you show me. Yeah. That's right. I can't do nothing, Jesus, without you. Yeah. I am nothing without you, Lord. Yeah. I got born again when I was 16 and called to the ministry at 18. Amen. And studying the Bible, seeking the Lord. Every day still, I find myself telling Jesus, Jesus, I can't do anything without you. Help me, Jesus. Hey! Help me, Lord. I got no strength without you. You are my strength, glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 See, but you can do all things through me. Through Christ, who, who gives me the strength. Amen. Yeah. See, no man know, but no man can know him unless he reveals himself. And that's why they didn't know him. Here he was, the Messiah, the Christ, walking their streets before them. And all these religious people looking at him, saying, we got to kill this guy. <laughs> We gotta try to trick him. We gotta judge him. We gotta bring false accus accusations against him. And they ended up having him killed. Amen? Amen. Yeah. When I had got born again at age 16 and began to know the Lord, and I was part of a few churches up to that time. And one time, in a dream, the Lord Jesus, I was 25 years old at this time, and the Lord Jesus came to me in a dream. It was so amazing. Now, I had been in the church, so I was learning the church world, you know, to see the leaders, the pastors, apostles, prophets, everybody. I was also called into the ministry, you know. But, but I would see some things and hear some things that I... I just wasn't quite sure what was going on in the churches, you know. Sometimes I felt like they were trying to rob the people out of their money. You know, you you get the feeling like, okay, this guy must be a shyster, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. Trying to get the people to empty out their bank accounts and different things like that, you know. So when I was 25, I find myself in a dream. I was standing like about here and, and then like about where the corner is of the room there, I see Jesus, and it looked like his 12 apostles, like when he was on earth. There was a gate that he was standing, but the gate was open. And I looked, I said, there's Jesus. And like a child, I ran up to him, and I leaped, and I wrapped my arms and legs around Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm clinging at his body. He's looking down, and he's about this, from this, you know, I'm looking up at him. Yeah. And in that experience, I remember I could see how Jesus really is, or how he really is. He looked so humble. Thank you, Pastor. There's one of our pastors, Pastor Benjamin. Thank you. Amen. 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 Jesus looked so humble. So down to earth, he had a beard, you know, long hair, and he just smiled at me. Mm. He and, and, and he was joyful. Amen. But the humility of Christ really stood stood out at me, you know. So that was the end of the dream. But there were some other things that happened. But I I don't even remember. I, I got glimpses of it, but I can't remember after that. But then I was still in the you know church world and stuff. And I would, like my church would have different guest speakers coming. And sometimes they would come with such a haughtiness, such a haughty spirit. Sometimes just plain out rude and mean, you know. And sometimes they'd be talking against other preachers, other well-known preachers. And I'd be feeling in my spirit, like, what is wrong? This just don't feel right, you know. 
And, and then it would come to me later. I'm like, but Jesus, I saw how you are. You're so humble. So joyous. Yeah. So down to earth. Yeah. So it took many years, maybe 12 years later, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I wanted you to see how different I am from all those preachers you saw. Uh huh. He said, and I want you, I don't want you to be like them, but I want you to be like me. He said. Amen. 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 That's right. I'm like, okay, that explains that. <laughs> and just a few years ago, I'm talking about like maybe less than two years ago, the Lord spoke to me about something about that, that same dream. Because I wondered, why, how can I leap on Jesus and wrap my arms and legs around Jesus, you know? Me and him are about the same height, you know? Of course, in a dream, you can do things you can't do in the natural, I mean. right. <laughs> right. And the Lord spoke to me some. He said, I'm, I'm showing you how that you are like a little child towards me. That's how I was able, you know, I got so excited when I saw him and ran up to him. And how many of you know we need to become like little children? That's right. Amen. Let's look at what it says here in Matthew 18. We're going to come back to this one, but go to Matthew 18 and 1. Hey, let me try that one more time. Uh, wake up a lot too, but... yeah. 18 and 1 says at that same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven yeah. it's a big question you know they're wondering you know like the apostles would be wondering Who's going to sit at his right hand? I think I need to sit at the right hand when we go to the kingdom and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I think I'm the greatest, sir. I must be the chief, you know. So, Jesus, he called a little child unto him. Yeah. You know, like, well, all the children are in there, but if you could picture a little child and set him in the midst. Hey, Nevaeh. Is Nevaeh in there? Yeah. Come here for one second. She says she loves Jesus so, 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 so much. Can you come out here for a minute? He took a little child and just set them in the midst of him. Yes. And he told them, he said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. That's the word. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest, someone say the greatest, the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven. I mean, clap your hands for the bear. Amen. Her word is, if you do it backwards, it's heaven. And she, and she is definitely sent from heaven. Amen. And then she said, You stop up and you're doing her bread. Oh, okay. <laughs> she was eating some bread back there. But whosoever shall humble himself as his little child, the same is the greatest. See, the way we think oftentimes is so bad. Words than the way Jesus thinks. Right. Now, this still goes for today. Yeah. This this didn't stop. See, but I remember when I would notice, I'd be like, now that apostle that came, he seemed pretty rude. He was mad at people. He was mad at Benny Hinn and mad at different people. <laughs> then I used to think like, well, okay, maybe, you know, I was, I hadn't been in the ministry as long as them. I'm like, well, maybe when you're in the ministry a long time, 
maybe there's a good reason to be rude and haughty and high-minded and things like that. <laughs> I didn't know the scriptures all that well, you know. But but the Lord said, no. He said, what you're thinking was right. I just don't want you to be like them. I want you to be like me. Amen. amen. How many of you want to be like Jesus? Amen. amen. Yes. Well, he's the one, amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, Lord. So, well, no, just, amen. Okay, let's just turn that off. We're just going to go old school. All right, so let's go back to uh, Matthew. Eleven. And go to verse twenty-eight. So after Jesus was saying in verse twenty-seven that no man can know Him or the Father except He reveals it to Him. That's right. He says, "Come unto me." Oh yeah. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. Now, when you look at these words, labor in the Greek and heavy laden. Those that labor is like to feel fatigue and being weary. Yeah. Heavy laden is very interesting. Heavy laden means Ooh. to overburden with ceremony uh -huh. or spiritual anxiety. And he was living in a day, of course, where the, the spiritual ceremonies were numerous. You know, you remember when Jesus had to rebuke all those teachers of the law, the Pharisees, he said, you have made the word of God of no effect by your tradition. He yeah. said, you lay all these burdens on the people, you won't lift them with one finger. Yeah. He said, you have yeah. yeah. Now, if you want to see a rough side of Jesus, yeah. look how he talked to those religious people. <laughs> that's, that's what got him, you know, riled up. Because they were supposed to be representing God. They were supposed to be teaching the Bible. <clears throat> so this is what Jesus was referring to, although anyone, you can, you can refer this to any sinner or saint. Amen. amen. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. But he was talking about being overburdened with spiritual or religious ceremonies. Yes. He said, and I will give you rest. Yes. He said, take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. Uh -huh. See, Jesus didn't care if his disciples, as they're walking by, they just pick, pick corn. They're hungry, pick corn, eat it. But what did the what did the Pharisees do? Lord, I don't you rebuke your disciples. They didn't wash their hands before they ate that corn. Right. Always wanted to stick to these rules and regulations, you know. Right. And they did that nonstop to Jesus. Uh -huh. But he said, learn to me. Take my yoke upon you. Yoke means my servitude to a law or obligation. That's from the original language. To a law or obligation. So they have a lot of laws. They have a lot of obligations. Of course, they were still living under the old covenant. So they had to keep that law until Jesus died and rose again. Uh-huh. But Jesus was bringing in the new as the old was ready to fade away. Amen? That's right. So he wanted the people to learn of him. He said, learn of me. Look, I'm meek and lowly in heart. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you. Yeah. He said, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Yes, sir. Yeah. You will find a refreshing. Rest means to repose. Yeah. To take ease. Mm -hmm. It even means recreation. Yeah. Yeah. That's why like, I always tell people, when you spend time with the Lord, yeah. don't be in a hurry. Yeah. I like to just get in a comfortable couch or chair or whatever. Yeah. And I usually pick my feet up, you know, grab me some tea or coffee. And just start meditating in the Word of God. Yeah. And take your time. And let Him refresh your soul. Yeah. Let Him give you repose. Let him give you a refreshing. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Just like what Kiki came in. She said, I'm going to go in that church because I need a refreshing from Jesus. 
Amen. I don't care if they do see that. And then Jesus said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My yoke is easy. It means it's better. <laughs> my yoke is better. Yes, it is. They're yoking you with all kinds of stuff. They're changing the commandments of God and they are putting man's traditions in there, making his word of none effect. Uh huh. And there's many things that the church tries to do to weigh people down. Amen. Many things. Amen. Burdens, even financial burdens. Uh -huh. You know, all these, you know, I'm going to say something. I don't know, you know, excuse me if some of this might hit somebody one way or another, but <laughs> just got to say what the Lord says. <laughs> you know, sometimes the church could use so much energy getting together the anniversaries or birthday celebration, you know? I remember in my old church because they would say, you know, we're going to have this anniversary, so this committee and that committee, everybody got to raise a thousand dollars for the pastor, you know, and give it to them on the anniversary and so forth, you know? And that's above the three or four hundred dollars they want from you individually, you know? Amen. And I remember my sister, Mother Wade, Amen. She had an idea. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna cut. You might have been there that day. <laughs> I'm gonna cook. We're gonna sell fish and chicken dinners. Yeah. We need all the de deacons to get ready with your cars and different things like that. We're gonna make a whole bunch of chicken dinners because we need to raise that thousand dollars. Yeah. Sister Wade was in charge of it all. She worked so hard. I was there helping out trying to deliver some of the dinners, you know. Yeah. Or, or I might have just come to buy one and eat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> After a couple hours, I see like three or four people carrying out Sister Wade out of the kitchen. <laughs> They're like dragging her out and she's, she's ready to pass out. <laughs> uh, yeah. Someone else had to take over that uh, ch chicken and fish uh, operation. <laughs> See, but that wasn't a burden that Jesus put upon her, amen? <laughs> that was a burden organized in the origins of, of the mind of man that said we got to raise that pastor a lot of money so he can walk out of that anniversary with twenty or $30,000, amen? <laughs> See, but was that a directive of Jesus Christ? That's what you got to ask yourself. I've seen people recently, they invited me to a service and I saw what it was about. It was all about a birthday celebration for so and so. It was all just organized to raise money for that person. And right. they're doing these schemes, you know. Because they know if they invite a whole bunch of people, okay, why don't you come and you sing a solo, you do this. And at the end of the day, it's not about Jesus. It's about getting a certain amount of money for that person. Amen. Amen. That's what Jesus is talking about now. He said, My yoke is easy. I used to think I'm like, well, what if everyone in the church just gave twenty dollars instead of spending twenty dollars on the fish? <laughs> they might come out with more than doing all that work, you know. <laughs> I'll never forget that day when they carried out Mother Wade. <laughs> <laughs> See, we need to know Jesus better. That's right. We That's need to right. know what he said. He's the head of the church. That's right. They always say he ain't gonna put no burden on you if you can't pay. <laughs> That's the word. That's the word. That's the word. So we gotta be careful not to burden down the church mothers, the church brothers. <laughs> Amen. That's right. That's right. We need to pray about these things. Amen. Yes. People ask me about doing church anniversaries here, and, and when I pray about it, I say, no, I just don't get the release, you know. That's why we don't, I don't even know when is our anniversary. <laughs> right. Or Founders Week or whatever. I say, Jesus is the founder, it's not about me. <laughs> we celebrate Jesus every day. Yeah. So Paul in Galatians.
Galatians now. Go to Galatians 1 and 10. Paul, Galatians said, For do I now persuade men or God? This word persuade means to pacify. Yeah. Do I now pacify or assent to men or God? Yeah. Or do I seek to please men? Yeah. Uh -huh. For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Woo. And sometimes we can get our eyes so much on a person. We gotta respect the leaders now. The Bible says, "Count those who labor among you with double honor." Amen. You respect them, but now it gets in trouble when the person in charge is demanding too much from the people and setting up things to honor themselves. They're supposed to come in here like the humble servant, right? You honor them, but they're. They're honoring Jesus. Amen. They're not letting it go to their head. Because the more some people receive honor and get a position, it goes right to their head. <laughs> Jesus said the kingdom of heaven will be likened up to a landowner who, who went far away and left it in charge of the, of the, of the servants. Yeah. Uh -huh. There was a few leaders and they began to beat and abuse the fellow workers. Amen. Eating and drinking for themselves and abusing one another. Yes. And that's what often comes comes down to in the church. Like Ezekiel said, Woe be unto the shepherds that, that don't feed the sheep, okay. but feed themselves. Feed God said, I'm going to give you pastors after my own heart. Yeah. People yeah. that have the spirit of Christ, the humility of Christ. When you yeah. see Jesus, you're going to see someone so humble, but yet has the greatest position in all the universe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Fire in his eyes. Yeah. But get humble as a lamb. Amen. Yeah. 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 Oh, I've seen him. I've seen him more than once. Yeah. When I was 16, that's how I got saved. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like Pastor was giving this testimony. I was out there on drugs, alcohol, in a rock band. I was only 16, but I had done a lot up until then. Working witchcraft and stuff. I was, I was studying witchcraft. The long story short, in the middle of the night, when the devil tried to take me, he took me out of my body and tried to get me to go with him. And I resisted. The devil actually spoke to me out loud and said, Come with me. I'll show you things that you don't know yet. He was like copying what God said in the book of Jeremiah. And I remember saying, No. And I was able to go back in my body when I sat up on my bed. Jesus was standing right in, in my doorway. Long white robe down to his feet. And his face just looked like the sun. And the, this is the first time I saw him. His face just looked like the sun shining. It was, he was so bright, I turned around in my pillow. I stuck my face in my pillow. But I, I began to call his name. I was like, Jesus. Just softly, I said, Jesus. And he put me to sleep. Woke up, like they say, with my mind, it was still on Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wasn't well, long after that, he let me to cast those demons out of me, cast all those spirits out of me. I yeah. cast them out myself, and I knew when they left me, too. Yeah. And that's how I got saved by reading the scripture after seeing him. So Paul says in verse 11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. Now, here's where we get into the meaning of the message, the revelation of Jesus. He said, the gospel I'm preaching, I didn't get it from man. It's not after men. He said, for neither did I receive it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. This is the thing Jesus wanted me to share. Because he wants me. He told me even while I was putting on my sandals today. Coming here. He said. I want to bring a revelation of myself. To the people that will be in the church today. Hallelujah. 
What does this word revelation mean? In the Greek, it means an appearing. Yes. A manifestation. A disclosure. Yeah. Paul knew Jesus after he saw him. Uh -huh. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, he said, I will, or 2 Corinthians 12 and 1, I think, he said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And Jesus let me know that there's many people here, he's about to release visions and revelations of himself to you. Oh, hallelujah. It's one thing, and it's a great thing to have a vision or a dream from the Lord. And they can come in all types of forms. Uh -huh. Peter saw the animals coming down, descending, you know, on, on, on that blanket. Uh -huh. Different people saw many things. But Paul said, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Greatest vision or revelation you can have is of Jesus himself. That's right. Yes. Now, he said, Paul said, I got the gospel by the revelation of Jesus Christ. It was revealed through him seeing. Now, if, if you read the accounts in the book of Acts, yeah. each account, one account says more than the other account. So, I think Jesus might have even said to him a lot more than just that. But everything Paul was preaching, began to preach, Jesus said it in that appearance of him like when he appeared and Paul saw the light. Uh -huh. Now we know Jesus appeared to him more because that's what he said in 2 Corinthians 12. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I feel led to share another time in 2008 because it's relevant to this. Paul said, I'm preaching by the revelation. What I'm preaching to you, I'm getting by revelation. Which you remind me, oh, Pastor, someone tell them they're getting a little too heavy in there. Paul said, I'm preaching what I got from Jesus in a vision. Now, Paul, of course, knew the scripture too. But in 2008, I was praying before church on a Thursday. I believe it was October 9th on a Thursday, around 5.15. I had only been praying for about 15 minutes. Uh -huh. On my knees. Like I'm on my knees on the side of my bed praying. Suddenly, I'm standing, but in the spirit. And there right in front of me was Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Now, this was the fourth time he appeared to me, but I've seen him uh, many times after that. But this was a very, very impactful time. He's standing right in front of me, and he he looks like he appeared as a very uh, young man, you know, 33 years old probably. That was his age. Amen. But to me, I was surprised he looked a lot younger than what, you know, than what I might have thought, how young he looked. Yeah. Long hair on the left side of his hair, he had like two or three twists coming down. They were kind of twisted a little. Once in a while, when my hair gets a little longer, I look in the mirror and I see those twists in my hair. I'm like, hey, that was like Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But his, his looked like they were purposely twisted. You know, probably like, you know how the Jewish people have those twists? It wasn't quite like yeah. that, but it was a little similar, you know? Amen. But in that experience, he revealed to me, he said, what you're looking at is your destiny. Mm. And what impacted me when I saw him, I saw his perfection and his love. At first, I, I couldn't describe his features. I just couldn't get myself to describe. I, I could only say he looked like love and perfection. Mm. I didn't want to say his hair was brown and things like that, you know. <laughs> yeah. But he looks like love and perfection. And what I saw in just those few minutes, and while I'm looking at him, 
his eyes turn green. And amazing thing that happened, when his eyes turned green, he transformed into the face. First his face transformed into a lion. And then his whole body, he turns into a lion. Yeah. A mighty lion. And I said, the lion of Judah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I was I was kind of so surprised, you know. Then he turned back into himself. <laughs> Amen. And he said, What you're looking at is your destiny, because and he was speaking of the perfection that I saw in him. And the love that when you see him, you know, when you get a revelation of him and you see how he really is. See, the Bible says. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Amen. Yes. But we know that when He shall appear, we yes. shall be. We shall be like Him. Yes. We shall see Him as He is. As he is. <laughs> yes. Now that's going to be the full yes. transformation yes. when our bodies are even going to be transformed. But Paul said, we behold the glory of the Lord is in a mirror. Yes. And as we look at the Lord like in a mirror, we're changed into the same image. Woo. Yes. From glory to glory, so, even by the Spirit of the Lord. So from that time in 2008, I must have preached 200 messages based on that one revelation of Jesus. You know, that's what I'm sharing. Because he let me know how perfect he was. All of a sudden in the scripture, everything opened up. The scripture, which talked about, he gave the fivefold ministry for the perfecting of the saints. Amen. Yeah. Anything that had to do with God will perfect that concerns you. And many, many messages yeah. I would get from that revelation. Yeah. So I've been preaching myself. I understand what Paul was saying because... Many things I preach, my he, he has shown me through the revelation of himself. So that's how when I look at the scripture, I'm like, oh, now I know what he's talking about. Right. <laughs> I saw that. Amen. So in this generation, like the generation that Paul was in, Paul came later after the original twelve apostles. Uh huh. But Jesus revealed himself face to face. Yes, he did. So that Paul can bring the revelation and write most of the New Testament without him even walking with Jesus like Peter, James, right. and John did. Right. But he knew Jesus deeply through revelation. Uh -huh. He said the gospel I got was by revelation. Yeah. So let's say we need a revelation of Jesus. We need a revelation, need a revelation of Jesus. Yeah. I can tell you more and more experiences, but that's not, you know, when Jesus reveals himself, but what the Lord showed me after that experience, he took me to John. Let's go to John 14. Uh huh. He said, This is why I keep showing myself to you. This is what he told me. John 14 and 21. Jesus said, he that hath my commandments, my commandments, and keepeth them. Uh -huh. Now his commandments, if you look up this word in the original language, it means an authoritative prescription. Jesus don't force us to do nothing. And neither should preachers, pastors, Force people to do anything, just like Jesus. He don't. He don't force them to do nothing. That's right. You, you you bring them to Jesus. Our job is to bring the people to Jesus. Bring Jesus to them. Okay. Come on, come on. And let them fall in love with Jesus. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. And they'll begin to walk in His ways. Right. But He said, "He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me." And he that loves me shall be loved of my 
power. See, this love is a relationship love. We know God so loved the whole world. He gave his only son. He loves everybody so much that he gave his own son. Thank you. But Jesus is saying, when you keep his commandments, you keep them. Then and, and that, that word keep is interesting. It means to guard from loss or injury and to keep unadulterated. Because remember, Jesus told those people, he said, you, you got the commandments of God, but you adulterate them by adding your tradition. Now, at, at the time, this is 2008, so now I had been in the ministry for a while. I had been resisting all the temptations to add traditions and the ways of man. I've been contending just for the faith of Jesus. So that's what I've been doing. I said, no, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm not going to follow what I perceive was added from the mind of man. You see? Uh -huh. So this is what he's talking about. If you have my commandments and you keep them, you guard them, you keep it pure. You keep the pure word of God. Yes. He it is that loves me and he should be loved to my father. So that this, this love that the father recognizes when you're paying attention to what Jesus said. The father says, that person loves my son. And that he will come into a love relationship, a personal relationship. It, it's it's a different than the love where he loves the whole world that he gave his own son. You know, that, that love is, right. is so amazing. But then this is a personal love. Right. I always use the example, like you saw in the bed, she's my granddaughter. So when I see her, she'll run up to me and hug me and I'll hug her. You know, I might lift her up, swing her around, whatever. But I ain't going to do that to no other kid just walking down the street. <laughs> I love them, yeah. I mean, I love everybody. I even love my enemies, right? Right, yeah. But I ain't going to pick someone else's granddaughter. I don't even know them, you know. Pick them up, that you know, they're, they're going to be hauling me to jail. <laughs> so, what Jesus is talking about is that love, like once you know each other. Right. When you get to know Jesus, then the Father says, My Father will love him. Then he'll pick you up and be like, Okay, you're mine now. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he says, and we'll close with this last part. He says, and I will love him. Jesus said, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Who said that? Jesus said that. That's right. He will manifest, which is the same word, to appear, to exhibit in person. Yes, Lord. Yes. So that's why what Jesus explained to me, he said, because you've been keeping my word, I kept my promise, that's why I appear to you. <laughs> when you hold on to his word, when you love his word, but you gotta fight to keep it pure. You gotta stand for Jesus no matter what anyone else says. I've had numerous times, you know, like I said, people in the church, they have good ideas. Let's do this fundraiser. Let's do this and that. Right away, I'll get a check in my spirit. Like, nah, okay, be weary of this. I'll say, uh, let me get back to you. Let me check with the boss. <laughs> right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Then I'll end up saying, no, nah, you know, I think God, God is leading to do that one. But you can't, you can't, um, Paul said, if I seek to please man, then I should not be the servant of Christ. That's right. That's right. But God will give me a way to explain it, people, you know, in the way where not, you know, not to be rude to them. Say, no, Amen. we can't do that. Amen. Just be rude. But to explain it, you know, Amen. why, Amen. you know, it's not a good idea. Amen. Let the Lord lead you. Oh, yes. Let the Lord guide. Oh, yes. okay. There's so many 
winds of doctrine that try to toss people to and fro. Paul said that we may grow up and not be tossed about by every winds of doctrine. To and fro. Making rules where one year you got rules, a few years down the road, those rules change. Why? Because they were made by man. Amen. <laughs> I'm seeing that, you know, you all probably seen it in the churches. They had all kind of rules, you know, back in the 80s and 90s. Come around later, everything can change. Well, that definitely wasn't God's rules. <laughs> that was made by man. That's why we need to get a revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't we stand our feet in His presence? Jesus. Yes. Your ways, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Only Your ways, Lord. Yes, Lord. We need You, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We want to know You, Lord. We want to know You more, Lord. Show us how you are, your ways, your love, your character, meek and lowly, the lion but yet the lamb. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. revealing myself to my people. Those who will follow after my way. Those that will take heed to my word. My commandments. For I'm gathering up my people unto myself. For I've revealed myself to generations. Some have not known me even in past generations because I have hidden myself from them. In the days of old, many did not even know my name. But I revealed my name unto generations. Then I revealed who I am. And in this generation, many shall know me, says the Lord. Many shall know who I am and how I am. And as the world will be in darkness, I will bring my people to the light. I'll bring my people unto me. And you shall know who I am, says the Lord. I will show myself to those who humble themselves to me. Those that hunger and thirst, I shall fill them. And I'll be within them a fire that shall burn 
And men shall not be able to put their light out, says the Lord. Come unto me. Come unto me, says the Lord. Come unto me.
Holy Spirit. And it came from the Holy Spirit. He's beginning to release something upon you that are in this place. He's begin to, beginning to release. I saw that banner turn into like, uh, I don't know, a substance that just drops down. The waves of the Lord are dropping down into your spirit. Like dry raindrops. They're not wet, but they're like just, you know, something is just turning in. His ways are just coming in. Oh, just say, Jesus, I receive from you. Let me walk in your ways. Let me walk in your ways. Let me know your ways. Let me know your ways. Let me see your face. Let me see your face. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, clap your hands for Jesus. Yay! Speak the name of Jesus. Yeah, so we'll